Hello, my name is Cameron K. McEwen, and I'm here on the third day of the 11th Hour Convention from Star Fury. I'm joined by Frances Barber. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, I'm a little tired today. It's quite, it's quite a full-on convention, isn't it? But, yes. but very thrilled to be here, and I've had a great time. Met some fabulous people. Yeah, I, have you had any strange requests from fans so far? No, I don't think so. I think, I mean, the lovely thing about the Doctor Who fans is that they're all incredibly friendly and they're delighted to meet the, their favourite characters and their favourite villains. I think they're all kind of surprised that I'm nice and I'm not a nasty, evil <laughs> Madame Kavarian, actually, which is quite relief, a relief for me and I think a relief for them. And, uh, and it's always a joy for me to be able to see how just chuffed they are to go oh wow she's a nice lady she will talk to me and have a picture taken with me with her arm around me so you know I've had a lovely time. It must be nice you work so long on a television or, or, a, or a film and to, to meet the people who actually watch it in person rather than say get the, the numbers through from the BBC it must be nice to have that personal connection. Oh it is completely and on the opening night here you know when we were all introduced and there was a huge cheer when I walked out you know you feel you don't really get that feedback in um, on film, uh, on television or, or, or in the cinema, you know, that you do in theatre. So it is fantastic to know that you touch so many people in a particular way, you know, so that it's, I mean, any actor would say that that's the most important thing in the world, and of course it is. It's nice to get nice reviews and all sorts of things written about you, but the most important thing is if the viewers, the fans, like the show, and if you you they respond to you so that's just you know delightful yeah and last night we were on the panel of the fancy dress competition mm. what did you make of that oh I, I just I mean quite apart from the fancy dress competition but just the way that everybody's dressed yeah. I'm so overwhelmed at the amount of time and care and and real sort of uh, uh, talent that goes into some of their costumes and ingenuity there were some in the fancy dresses, as you know, you saw, Cameron, that were so kind of one-off, fascinating kind of takes on things. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, all kinds of uh, variations of Daleks and Dalek dresses and Doctor versions of Doctors. And just, I mean, and, and the, the one that won, Vesta, Vestra, you know, Madame Vestra's costume, absolutely amazing mask that I know that the prosthetics, like for the silence, we had a couple of those, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a real skill. Yeah. And I'm so impressed at these, you know, I call them kids because I'm so old, but they, they're they fantastic. The yeah. work and effort and, and imagination that they've put into them, yeah, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Now, you came into to Doctor Who last year. Uh, how did that come about? Did you put uh, a call out to your agent to say, I want to be in Doctor Who, or did they come <laughs> knocking on your door as it were? I, no, I, I, when it very first started again, you know, with Chris Eccles and everything, and I'd certainly made it known that I would be very interested if I were to be asked. I've always wanted to be in Doctor Who. And then it just never happened that there was a part for me. And then all of a sudden, I got a call to come and do Madame Kavarian. And originally it was only to do um, A Dead Man Goes to War. So uh, it, I thought that that was all I was doing, that episode. And then when I arrived, I was given all those little tiny extra yeah. sort of little teasing through the hatch bits to film, which of course thrilled me because yeah. it was just made Kavarian even more and more and more interesting. And then, you know, a little extract at the end of, I think, episode 12 with River Song, you know, a little sort of uh, teaser and a carrot to work out what was going on next so i mean all of that just was fantastic so i was, I was just thrilled i've always wanted to be in doctor who so i was yeah. just delighted and i've always wanted to play a villain <laughs> in doctor who mm. you're a very playful uh, actress that's probably why you want to be a villain i'd imagine <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> so so you, you'd been a fan of doctor who in, in the past uh, you, had you followed at all oh of course but i mean in my era it was when i was a student it was tom baker mm -hmm. and we you know we all loved tom baker his voice and we all were mad about him yeah. that laconic iconic voice that went on to do the voice of little britain you know so um and uh, and my in real life my friend is sylvester mccoy so i was very aware of it mm -hmm. as i was growing up and then when it restarted you know and i'd also seen the movie with paul mccann yeah. And um, so when it restarted, I watched Chris and then David, and, and then, of course, I ended up working with the brilliant Matt. So, you know, couldn't be happier. 
do you see the 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 2005 restart, as it were, different to the previous series, or do you see it much as a continuation? I think it's a continuation. I think that each decade has a doctor for that decade, yeah. um, whether it be a 10-year decade or whether it spans a 20-year. It, I think it's each generation sort of has its own interpretation of the doctor, which is why the costume department and the art department are so vital to get the look. And, you know, Matt's particular look is very, very different to David's, which is very different to Chris's, which is very different to all of them, you know. Um, and I think that it's it's... I, it's great to be reinterpreted and yeah. reimagined each each season, as it were, of a new time for a new doctor. So, yeah, no, I think it's brilliant yeah. the way that yeah. it's been done. Yeah. So the 50th anniversary is looming for Doctor Who next year. Do you think we could see a possible return for Madame Kaveria? Oh, I would love it if that happened. <laughs> uh, believe me, let's get everybody asking Stephen Moffat to bring her back. Yeah. Stephen, you heard it here first. <laughs> Madame Kaveria wants back. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, there'd be nothing I'd love more. Because I think the story is still there to be told. Um, well, yes, because when we were uh, filming it, we did film two uh, endings. One where Amy does kill me with the eye drive and one when she doesn't. And uh, I was doing a commentary about the episode, which I hadn't yet seen, with uh, Stephen and Jeremy Webb, the director. And, um, and they chose the ending in which I was killed. So I went, oh, I'm rather sad about that, Stephen. And he said, well, you obviously don't understand my scripts, do you? Because it was a completely wrong timeline. So I went, I see. Does that mean I'm not dead? And he went, well, what do you think? May you work it out? So that was my one indication that possibly, rather like River Song, I think you can always come back. Yeah. And you've got nice henchmen with the, the silence. Wonderful henchmen, haven't I, with the <laughs> silence. And also my two uh, guys in fatigues. Yeah. Who are b professional soldiers in real life. Oh, were. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were teaching everybody how to ha hold the rifles. And yes, w we had a great time, actually. You know, they were fantastic, really looking after me. And uh, yeah, so in real life, I, had, I was looked after. And Kavarian was looked after by the silence as well. Uh, how does it compare working on Doctor Who to, to say, a, a Hollywood movie or, or a movie of any distinction? It, you know, filming's filming. Mm. You get up very early, the hours are very, very long, <laughs> and um, you you get on set and do your stuff. I mean, yeah. it's it just it's it's how many people are involved depends on the size of the budget and the size of the project. But it basically is it's the same. You yeah. know, it 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 could be even on a short, tiny, little, low budget feature. It's exactly the same principle. Mm. Um, that you get up, do your lines, you're always cold, you're always freezing, your feet always hurt, <laughs> and... Um, the life of an actor. And that's it, <laughs> I know, you know, everyone knows enough by now. That's the, the de-glamorisation of it, I think, is, is ha has permeated the public psyche now. Everybody knows it is not glamorous at all. No. You just <laughs> are always permanently cold and your feet always hurt. But other than that, you, the end product is always worth it. Well, let's hope it's always worth it. So when you watch the end product, say of something like Doctor Who, do you have a get friends round or do you have a special screening? Um, I normally, I don't like watching myself with friends if I've not seen it first, because mm. I just feel sort of self-conscious and embarrassed and go, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Oh, why did I do that? Uh, but uh, f when this, when that episode at the end of the first half of Doctor yeah. Who was screened, some friends of mine held a party for me yeah. with um, Doctor Who cakes and sort of, and I had to cut a cake of my face in half and <laughs> sort of, you know. So that was quite uh, a, a difference. But they were huge Doctor Who fans anyway, right. so they were just delighted, you know. So, so that was one of the few times I've done anything like that. <laughs> uh, how many conventions have you been to so far? Well, this is my first convention. Oh, isn't yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So I've done. Um, I think I've done two signings, um, but no, this is the first time I've actually met the fans properly yeah. and and actually been around them for this length of time. But so that's been great. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect, but um, you know, it, I think it's a much nicer way of of meeting the fans rather than just a signing, which is a bit sort of uh, well, just less personal. Yeah. Let's put it that way. So uh, yeah, so this is nice. I feel as if I've sort of made some friends. Yeah, <laughs> on Twitter perhaps. And on Twitter <laughs> as well, I hope. Yes. 
Uh, can we expect to see you at more conventions then in the future? Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Yes, I'd, I'd absolutely love to. I think it's a, you know, it's it's just a great way of of, of meeting fans properly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, so what do you have uh, in the pipeline in the future? I know Silk, the BBC One series finishes this week. Yeah, well, the series two it is actually, two, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that finishes soon. Hopefully, we'll do another. And um, and at the moment, I'm doing. Um, uh, a, a new comedy for Sky okay. written by the Darren Litton who writes Benadorm and it's called The Spa and we're filming uh, Rebecca Front stars in that and I play her best friend and we'll be filming that till uh, middle of August so expect to see it probably in the new year I guess yeah. It's interesting Sky are putting money into dramas and comedies mm. because they're making some excellent uh, from what I've seen programming They they are they're making a huge amount yeah. of drama and huge amount of comedy drama as well I mean they are you know I mean it's a it's one of the few enterprises that is actually putting money into drama so let's embrace it and yeah. go thank you very much Sky you know because it's <laughs> so important to keep that motor running yeah especially in these times when the BBC are cutting stuff exactly okay so our time is an end thank you very much for joining me Francis that's a pleasure thank look you look forward to seeing you again thank, thank you very much goodbye of course I hope it's a possibility, it's an amazing thing to do. You know, so it's obviously it would be very difficult that the storyline would have to be something to do between 1969 and, and 2011 or, or a particular purpose. I don't know. I don't know what Stephen's going to do. Either way, I'll still keep watching. It's not going to change my love for, for Doctor Who or my love for Sherlock, whether I'm in it or not. Yeah. You know, I was a big fan of Battlestar before I was ever on Battlestar. Okay. So, you know, these things have a way of working out well. I've yeah. enjoyed the ride so far, but in a minute, I'll be on it in a minute. It's yeah. a lovely thing. Matt is just such an extraordinary person to, to, to work with. And Stephen's writing is something else. It's something so, so different. 